This morning our scripture comes from the letter uh, to the Ephesians written by Paul the Apostle uh, in the 6th chapter, verses 10 through 18. Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. If you've got your Bibles, go ahead and open it, whether it's uh, the paper one or the digital one. The words will also be on your screen. Um, as you're able, would you stand in honor of the reading of God's word? Ephesians 6, verses 10 through 18. Paul begins to end his letter with this. He says, a final word. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will, be, you will still be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. What if I told you that your frustrations at work, particularly your frustrations with a boss or with a co-worker, are not really frustrations with them? What if I told you that your conflict at home with your spouse, husband, wife, your conflict with your children or children with your parents, or with um, grandchildren or with a guardian is not really a conflict with them? Or what if I said that your disagreement with the church, whether uh, denominationally or particularly here, is not really with the church? Or what if I told you that a disagreement a broken relationship, bitterness or resentment, unforgiveness that you have towards a fellow church member, a fellow body of Christ member, is not really a conflict with them. Now, before you get all tied up in a knot, I'm not saying, here's what I'm not saying. I'm not saying that our frustrations and our conflicts and our disagreements and our broken relationships aren't due to the conscious decisions of other people. I am not excusing sin. I'm not excusing the choice to sin. I am not excusing bad behavior. But what I do want us to realize is that a lot of our struggle, a lot of our fights, a lot of our conflicts do go beyond the person right in front of us, including the person in the mirror. It goes deeper than that. Here again, uh, what Paul writes in verse 12 of our passage, he says, For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. When we fight at home or work or uh, even inside the church, our friendships, we're not fighting each other. We're fighting against the enemy. We're fighting against evil. Because while we're struggling at home, or we're struggling at work, or we're struggling inside the church, guess what? We're distracted. We're preoccupied. We're discouraged and defeated. All the while, others around us in our community, in our own sphere of influence, guess what? They're going farther and farther and farther away from God. And we're not doing anything about it. 
because we're distracted, we're defeated, we're discouraged. And again, I'm not saying that our own personal choices and our own personal sins and, and the personal acts of the disobedience are to be d- diminished at all or, or brushed underneath the rug. Not, not what I'm saying at all. What I am saying is that, it, is that the enemy will use our sin, our brokenness, our selfishness to create barriers between us and those at work, those at home, those at school, and even inside the church so that we become distracted from the mission that God has given us. The enemy would much rather us be struggling with each other face-to-face or sometimes fist-to-fist. Y'all know who you are. I'm just joking. The enemy would much rather us be struggling with each other face-to-face than for us standing shoulder-to-shoulder on mission for what God has us to do in this world. The enemy wants us off mission, the mission to go and make disciples. And the enemy will will use our conscious choice to sin, to rebel against God and to rebel against each other to cause us struggles and conflict with one another. Paul's just finished a whole series of teaching on relationships in in chapter 5 and at the beginning of chapter 6. He's teaching the church about... um, the marriage relationship about husband and wives and how they should interact with one another. He teaches um, parents and children how they should interact with one another. He talks about the slave-master relationship. And so before I go any further, let me just pause. Paul's not condoning that relationship of slavery, uh, slave and master. Paul is simply acknowledging a reality of his day. but he's also turning it on his head. Because he says both to slaves and masters to be Christ-like and to be spirit-filled. So Paul has just taught deeply on personal relationships, how to live Christ-like relationship, how to to live spirit-filled relationship. And it's with these teachings from Paul that he gives us verse 12. For we're not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Paul is saying here that when your husband or your wife does something stupid, the devil is laughing because we begin to be in conflict with one another. When your coworker or your boss does something stupid and you begin to be in conflict, the devil is laughing because we're in conflict with one another. When your child does something that just, or let's be honest, children, when, when us parents do something that makes us go, the devil is laughing because we're in conflict with one another. And so what do we do? How do we navigate our relationships in the hopes that the enemy won't use our brokenness against us? How do we live out our marriages and our friendships and our home life in such a way that the enemy won't use our sin to drive a wedge in our earthly relationships? Where the enemy won't distract us from the mission of going and making disciples. Well, Paul says in verse 10 and 11, he says, Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you'll be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. Paul says we're to put on the full armor of God. In order to be strong, in order to stand firm, we need to put on armor. Because again, we're in a fight, not against flesh and blood, but against evil, the enemy. The same enemy that tempted Jesus in the wild that we've been studying about studying in Luke 4. And just like in Luke 4, as that enemy most likely manifested himself in the thoughts of Jesus, uh, don't not really sure that Jesus had the little tiny devil on his shoulder, you know, with the long tail and the pointy ears and stuff like that. Not sure. Most likely, just like the enemy interacts with us, is those thoughts that enter our mind. Thoughts of temptation. We can't see our enemy. Our fight, as Paul says, is against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world. 
So he tempts us with our thoughts. He tries to invade our heart and our mind. I mean, just think about it for a second. Think about when you're in conflict with your spouse. And your husband has done something stupid. Because we know the wives aren't doing that, right? So it's all, it's all the husband's fault. So let's just put that out there, right? Okay? Right in that moment that that dumb thing has happened, aren't you thankful that people can't hear your thoughts? Aren't you thankful that people can't see your heart at that moment? Because it would probably be described only as evil. I didn't get a lot of amens after that because I don't think y'all wanted to confess that. But when we're in conflict with, with our spouse or we're in conflict with our coworker, or we're in conflict with a church member, in that moment... We are thankful that our thoughts cannot be heard and our hearts cannot be seen. Again, the enemy will use our conflict in, in, with each other to distract us and steer us down a path that is evil and full of disobedience. So in order to be strong, in order to stand firm, we need to put on the armor of God. Verses 14 through 17 tell us this. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you'll be fully prepared. In addition to all these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. You've got the belt of truth, the breastplate or the body armor of righteousness. You've got the shoes of peace. You've got the shield, the shield of faith. You've got... Um, the helmet of salvation, you've got the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Paul says that we need to put on armor. Now, of course, if we're, if we're fighting an unseen ruler, an unseen enemy, we're not walking around you know, with actual body armor like a Roman guard or a member of the military, but these are spiritual pieces of God's armor that we're called to infuse into our lives so that we can be strong and stand firm against the enemy. Truth, righteousness, peace, faith, salvation, the Holy Spirit, the Word of God. God has given us all these things to help protect us when we're in conflict with the enemy. Now I want you to notice something. All of these pieces, except for one, are defensive in nature. God's armor is meant for defensive purposes. They are meant not for attacking, but for standing our ground, as Paul puts it. Being firm, standing strong, standing firm against all the strategies of the devil, all except the sword, are defensive pieces. Because here's what I want us to remember. God is the one that's fighting. God is the one that is fighting, and God always wins. God's already won. Any power that the enemy, the Satan, the devil has is what we give him. Jesus broke the power of sin with his sacrifice on the cross. And for those of us in Christ, the devil has no hold on us. I don't know about you, I've, I've read the end of this book. I've read it several times. And God wins. God wins every single time. I've never seen a different ending. He wins every single time. God is the one who is fighting on our behalf. Who has fought for us and will continue to fight for us. We in the church, we need to stop acting like we are helpless. Like we have no power, that we have nothing. Paul says, put on the full armor of God, of God. It's not our armor, it's God's armor, because he's the one fighting. Stand firm, stand strong, stand your ground. God is fighting for us, God has fought for us, and God has won. Don't forget that. God is fighting and has fought and will fight, and he's won. Whew! And don't lose sight of this. 
this one thing. Prayer is the most powerful piece of God's armor. I feel like this last verse gets overlooked. Yet some commentaries, when you read them, will, 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 will label the sword, the sword of the Spirit, and the Word, and prayer. Paul says this. He ends this, this verse that we read. He says, pray in the Spirit in all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. He says, pray. Pray in the Spirit. Pray all the time. Pray for everything. Pray. Stay alert. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Pray, 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 pray. You all know this because I've been talking about it for a while now, but I see God doing a mighty thing in the life of our church in the ministry of prayer. God is awakening us to the power of prayer. If nothing else, he's awakening me. He's awakening us to the power of prayer, and not just my prayers or your prayers, but the prayers of God's people. The power of God's people praying together and for each other, there's nothing like it. Nothing like it. Stay alert. Be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. When I look at this passage and the idea of God's armor, I truly believe that prayer is one of these rare defensive and offensive weapons. Prayer can help guard and protect our hearts. Defense. And prayer is how we go on the offensive, being persistent in our prayers for all believers everywhere. I think about Jesus. Jesus often withdrew to a lonely place to pray. He was eating and, and he, was, he was drinking and he was teaching and he was healing and he was praying. When he wasn't doing one of those, he was doing the other. I mean, here was the Son of God, the Messiah, going off alone to talk with his Heavenly Father. He talked and he listened. I have to imagine that he was praying both to guard himself against the enemy schemes and praying for strength to go out and to teach and to preach and to heal and to do ministry, to go on the attack. Prayer is how we connect to our Creator, our Heavenly Father. Prayer is how we lift one another up and encourage one another. Prayer is how we see healing and restoration. Prayer through faith is how we receive salvation. Here's how I would sum up Paul's passage that we read in Ephesians. Stand firm by falling to your knees. Stand firm by falling on your knees. Over and over again, Paul encourages us to be strong. Stand firm. Stand your ground. Be strong. Stand firm. Stand your ground. Be strong. Stand firm. Stand your ground. And I would argue that in order for us to do exactly that, in order to stand against the schemes of the enemy, we've got to fall to our knees in prayer. Prayer is essential to fighting off the enemy. Prayer is how we experience breakthrough. Prayer is how we experience healing. Prayer is where we are reminded of who is fighting our battles and who has already won. We stand firm by falling on our knees. This morning, I want to do something a little different. This is why this whole service has felt a little different. I do believe that the Lord is doing something amazing in our world, but not just in our world, some far off place. I feel like he's doing, I know, well, no, I know he's doing something amazing in our midst, in our very midst, in our own church, in our own sphere of influence. And I believe there's power in testimony. We're called to be witnesses to the good news of Jesus. And so I'm going to invite Al Eddingfield to come up here. I'm going to go down there. He's going to come up here. And um, I am going to invite Al to, ooh, I don't know if that's going to work. It'll be all right. You didn't tell me you were going to preach here tonight. Yeah, well, I couldn't get up here and not preach. Um, I want Al to share uh, a testimony, an experience uh, that he has recently had. Uh, through of prayer and through prayer and by prayer, um, and we're going to do it through a Q and A, a little question and answer, uh, just because he didn't want to be up here by himself. Um, <laughs> I didn't tell you I was going to say that. Um, here's here's what I also believe. I believe I believe 
very much so, that God is relearning us. And I know that's horrible English. Um, He is reteaching us how to follow him, what his word tells us. And in some cases, we're learning it for the first time, okay? Us, including me, all right? He is, he's, he's reteaching and he's teaching us for the first time. Um, um, I have, I've had some amazing encounters with the Lord over the last year, all because somebody taught something and sort of showed me the way. And uh, my heart was open to what God wanted to do in my life, all right? And uh, I think God wants to use what happened to Al um, to teach us, all of you, to edify. I think anything that God does in anybody's life is to edify the body of Christ, right? So it's not just for Al, no, but it's for the whole church. All right, let's get back to it. Um, so Al, uh, let's, let's, let's draw everybody's attention. To two Sundays ago, um, I had a time of prayer. I had called up, uh, I think, about five people to, to pray over them for healing, uh, physical healing for different ailments and um, issues that they were having physically with their body. And you were one of those, right? Yes, I had a cyst on my neck and uh, probably had it for 10 or 15 years, no problem. And it abscessed. And uh, that Wednesday, uh, it seemed like it was all in one day that it happened. But anyway, I uh, had to go to the emergency room and had to lance it. And uh, almost instantly had relief from the pain I was having. Uh, and then Alan prayed for me on Sunday. Uh, I didn't feel anything. Uh, yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna, I was gonna ask you, Al. Uh, so, so uh, after I prayed for you, uh, what happened? Nothing. All right, nothing, all right. So, all right, uh, so I was obedient. Here's I just this lesson learned. Uh, um, I, I felt the Lord um, lead me to pray for Al and some others, uh, really by name. The Lord gave me these names, and so I, I did that. Yes, you did. And yeah. nothing happened. No, but I think so. It praise was, the Lord. I All right, praise it, the Lord. Amen. All right, so let's go on. And, and I do so, appreciate it. You're welcome. You're and welcome. All right, so just uh, we're just we're less, lesson number one uh, nothing may happen. Right. Um, two, uh, so what happened up Monday? What happened well, on Monday? Monday morning, uh, we had a heavy rain Sunday afternoon, and our garbage sink sets a boat it, it just turns over every time it rains and the dogs got into it so I was outside picking up trash bending over several times and everything and I started back to the house and I fell I don't know how I fell I don't know if I was dizzy I don't know anyway I fell in the road and thank goodness the school bus had already gone by because <laughs> because I I've probably been twice but anyway maybe they not, maybe they would have slowed down yeah maybe but I couldn't get up and the dog started barking, and Miriam was alerted and come out and helped me get up. Uh, when I fell, I fell on my side, and the pain was awful, very awful. I don't know if I broke a rib, bruised it, or, or what. Anyway, Miriam thought it was my heart at first. Uh, but she it was her got, heart. That it, it was, was her, her heart, heart. Yeah. yeah. She did not like seeing you in the road. Yes, because it goes back to telling what you preach a while ago. She knew I did something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, we're all talking. All right, so but Monday. In, anyway, uh, she got me in the house, and basically Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, I sat in the chair most of my time. Uh, the pain was pretty bad. Uh, I was maxing out on Tylenol and ibuprofen, and uh, it was not touching it very much. Well, we had to walk through Emmaus coming up that week. Busy week. Miriam had waited for years and, and had worked tirelessly putting this thing together. It was her turn to be the LD. I was going one way or the other. Right, let, let me let me let me uh, interject here. So the walk to Emmaus is a spiritual retreat uh, for um, there's one there's a men's walk uh, that happens the first weekend and then the following weekend there's a women's walk that happens. Miriam was the lay director. She waited five years to be the lay director, which is a lot, lot longer, over five years, because of COVID. COVID paused a lot of those retreats and so forth, but she waited an extra long time. And she'd asked me to be her spiritual director. There's a, it's, it's mostly lay-led, and, um, she, but there are, there's five members of the clergy, and, and she asked me to be a spiritual director for that, along with other four of the clergy. And, and so I want to say this right off the bat. What we're going to talk about really has nothing to do with the Walk to Emmaus. It just happened there. So if you've never been to the Walk to Emmaus, 
I don't want you to think this is what the Walt Emmaus is all about, uh -huh. although I do believe God can work and does work anywhere and anyhow he wants to. Uh, but this is just um, this is sort of outside of the Walt Emmaus. Um, but, but Al was, was determined to be there. He, sure. he also helped uh, 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 unload uh, housing. And load housing. Yeah. He load Thur up. Um, Thursday was bad. Huh? Thursday was Thursday's bad. bad because all these ladies show up. And, you know, I mean, ladies, let's be honest. You, you pack for oh, a weekend sorry. like you're packing for a month. Um, um, and so those, those suitcases were heavy, and you're packing them up. You're putting them in the cabins and so forth, working a lot. And so you're just really hurting on your side. Yes. Friday, you're doing the same. You're kind of going around helping with cabins and so sure. forth. Uh, I was not effective because I, I was hurting. One of the guys that was working with us actually went to me and then told her that I was not. I'll pull my leg. Yeah. And uh, but I'm sure you appreciate that. Yeah. And so Miriam was worried about me. Uh, Paige and Jason were, and evidently Tegan was worried about me because he called Paige several times and said, look after Debbie. Uh, thank you. I appreciate you noticing that. <laughs> uh, I could not do hardly anything up until Thursday, and then I forced myself to do things. I did not sleep Thursday night at all. I sat on the edge of the bed, and I was up and down, up and down. And my plan Friday was to get in the truck where I could sit up and, uh, and sleep. That was my plan for Friday. Uh, and Friday night, we had a communion for the workers and everything. And uh, Brett Maddox? Yeah, so um, we had, um, there's, there's some background folks that are helping with the retreat, and and towards the evening, we had a, a special communion and, and, and devotion for those workers. Al was a part of that. And um, Brett Maddox is a really good friend of mine, um, was working the walk. And I asked him to do the devotion and lead communion. And before we went out there, we had a little little word that Al was not doing really good. He was even contemplating going home, even though this, this is Miriam's walk and so forth. And um, and so actually, actually, before we went out, the lay directors um, with one of our clergy actually said a prayer, had prayer for you before we went out. And then um, w our plan was to pray over you uh, as we went out there. And so Brett does, does the devotion. He mm -hmm. leads us in communion. And then he begins to talk about uh, healing. So sure. And uh, when he starts explaining about the anointing and everything, I could feel my feet moving. If he had not called my name, I still would have been the first person up there. Uh, I, something was happening at that point in time. And so I went up there, and uh, he explained what he was going to do. And, and uh, I, uh, I told him I was about to say this on my neck. I told him about my side, how it was hurting. And I carried it a little too far, and I told him my leg, too. You know, my, while we're at it. You know, you know, might as well just Man. fix all of it while we're into it. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and Because I was expecting a miracle. I do not walk through those doors without expecting a miracle because it's not going to happen if you're not. If you don't believe, you're not expecting it. And uh, so he called my name. And so I went up there, and he explained everything to me. And, I, and so he said... He said, okay. I said, yes. Um, normally, you would expect me to go from my neck to my side to my leg or from my leg to my side to my neck. That's not the sequence he did it. He went to my neck. He went to my leg. And when he came to my side, I don't know what happened after that. So let me... Um so let me just tell you real quick. So um, Brett did a really good job of setting the stage. He, he basically, you know, he said, listen, we don't know how God heals. We don't know how, why God heals, why God doesn't heal, um, when, or, you know, there's a lot that we do not know. Amen. A couple of Sundays ago, Al felt nothing. Um, so, um, but he quoted James 5.16, that uh, call upon the elders of, of the church and anoint, and, uh, anoint them with oil and, and pray over them, have them have, be prayed over. Um, and he also, when he, when he grabbed, when he had Al come forward, um, he, he asked Al for permission to touch the parts of his body that were hurting. Um, he anointed him with oil and prayed over like Al did, Al said. He also said, I'm going to pray a straight line prayer, which wow. I was like, okay, Brett, all right, what you doing now, <laughs> Brett? This is my buddy. I'm like, all right. He said, I'm not praying if God heals you. I'm not praying if it's your will. He says, I'm going to pray for healing. 
Um, and that's when he went and he touched, he prayed over his, his uh, neck, he prayed over his leg, and he prayed over his thigh. And at that moment, Al says he doesn't remember much after that. I do. Um, <laughs> Al had a guttural, uh, like a guttural release. And also, he lost his balance. Um, if I, I had, uh, I had, Brett, I was over here on the pew over here, and Brett was over here with Al, and I had a thought, hey, I might need to go stand behind him. I'm so glad I did. Um, because if not, uh, he would have fallen on the pew. But uh, if, if he did not, he would have fallen straight back. That's, and that's what happens sometimes when you encounter the Holy Spirit and you, you have an experience like this. Um, but uh, we, he regained his balance. And, um, and did we go to the altar right then or did you go back to your seat? Right, 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 then, right then we went to the altar. And um, I just had to pray over him. Uh, several uh, family yeah, several members. People went, and, and someone was speaking. <laughs> Somebody was speaking in tongues. Um, yes, that 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 happens. Um, and and so we 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 got up, and Al got back to his pew, and he everybody sits down. Al s- remains standing, and he's crying, and he just says, "I have no pain in my left side. I have no pain in my left side." Al doesn't remember saying that. <laughs> no, I don't remember saying that. Um, really, uh, and. Several things happened after that. Of course, I had to replay it several times uh, to different different people, and the part they want to hear, I don't remember. So that's you know. But uh, we got about halfway back to the cabin, and one of the guys turned around and stopped, and he said, "That's what we're missing in church." A very true statement. Uh, and Adam's theme right now is prayer. The first person I encountered on the walk whenever I left my cabin was headed to the kitchen and uh, was Miss Betty Williams from Regisville, beautiful lady. And she said, Al, I'm praying for you. Her husband is dying of cancer and she made goodies for the uh, pilgrims and carried them to the camp room. That's the first person, I'm praying for you. The second person put her arm around me and she said, Al, I'm praying for you. And I understand the group while we were in communion in the chapel were praying for you and Brett. So what we pray for really matters. I mean, sometimes we have to change our prayer to get an answer. Um, and so, Al, how long, um, how did you sleep the, that night? So, uh, Friday night, I didn't go to the truck. I got in my sleeping bag, and I slept on my left side all night long. I never sleep on my left side at home. Uh, I, ne- I just never do. The alarm clock went off at 6 o'clock, and uh, I rolled over and went back to sleep. That's a miracle, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, I've worked a lot of walks. I've always seen the sun come up because one of my favorite things to do is go to the tabernacle and pray before daylight. It's just something about sets the mood for me. That's just something I love to do. Uh, but that's the first time the sun caught me sleeping. Uh, I've slept good since then, and you're going to be glad to hear this. Uh, I went to the doctor Wednesday, went to the surgeon Wednesday, expecting to set up a surge date for my uh, cyst. He put a Band-Aid on it and told me not to worry about it. Uh, he, he said it may That was my prayer. <laughs> that was... Brett covered your side. I got your sis. Yeah, I know. But, I don't know. I don't know. But I don't uh, know. And I mean, he said it may come back. It may not. We'll take care of that. And I put a bandaid on it and sent me home. And uh, Thursday, I'd had blood work done a couple of weeks before that, and I saw the doctor there, and she walked in the door, and her first words was, "Your blood work was great." And she had big circles around. Almost everything. Uh, praise God. I mean, it wasn't about Emmaus. It wasn't about Alan. It wasn't about Brett. It's the mere fact that we serve a God that is so awesome that he can and he will. We just have to believe. Amen. Amen. So, I didn't do anything. <laughs> so I will just add a few things. Um, Brett, um, just because of the relationship I have with him, has been for months praying for people to be healed. Uh, whenever the opportunity arose, he's just, just stepped out in faith, 
uh, praying for people, this is the first moment that that has occurred, um, that healing has actually taken place, that he, that he knew of, right? And so it's like, it's like what I just said, like sometimes it, it doesn't happen, but it's, 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 not really, it's not really all about that, it's about being obedient. And then also, as, as Al said, his feet were moving before Brett even mentioned his name. Al's faith had a lot to do with his side being healed. Our faith has a lot to do. If we do not believe it's possible, then guess what? It's not possible. Uh, but if we have faith that God, God will do uh, what his word tells us he will do, he will heal, he will restore, he will heal uh, physically, relationally, uh, mentally, emotionally, all of it, he will heal. Um, and so, and by the way, yeah. uh, since I got home Sunday, I've been on the tractor six to eight hours a day, uh, no problem. I couldn't get on the tractor before that. So, so it, it's continuing. I mean, I still feel great. I feel great. Paul says, pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. And so I just, I mean, I think it'd be a horrible thing if we just didn't open up the, this time for prayer. And so uh, we're just going to have a little music playing, and uh, the altar will be open for you to come and pray. Pray with somebody. Pray with a partner. Uh, pray in your pew. If you would like prayer for healing, um, uh, I'll be up here. Um, um, the Lord is doing something in our midst um, and preparing us for something um, that I don't know, we don't fully understand or know, but the Lord wants to work in us in a mighty way. Um, we all have his presence in us and with, through, through the power of the Holy Spirit, um, and we need to lean into that and trust in it uh, more than we have been. Um, and so we're just going to open up our time with prayer. I'll, I'll, be, I'll open us up with prayer and then um, come as you feel led. Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, for all that you're doing. Lord, we recognize that every breath that we take and every day that we wake up, it's a miracle. But we also realize that you want to do much more. You want to heal and restore. You, you are speaking to us right now. Help us to listen. Lord, we know that the world is full of hurt and pain, all kinds. And we know and we pray it every Sunday for your kingdom to come and your will be done. So, Father, we pray now that your kingdom would come. Manifest yourself here in this place. Help us to fall on our face. That we would be humble. That we would recognize that we can't do this in our own power, but only in yours. Lord, do in us what we can't do for ourselves. We trust in you. We put our whole faith and our hope in you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.